Hello, this is Geoffrey Frankel with Solutions in Chemistry. Today I'm going to talk about mass spectrometer questions in IB question paper 1. You can do these questions fast and correctly in less than 30 seconds. In order to deal with questions about mass spectrometer, there are certain things you just have to remember. You just have to memorize them. There is no choice about it. And as soon as you see this, I mean, this is a fairly simple question. There are only three things they're asking you to put into the correct order. And you can see that ionization is first, acceleration is next, and deflection is the third one. So B is the answer. Okay, and this is one of these questions that take advantage of the fact that it shouldn't take you more than about 10 seconds to do it. This is clearly another one where you just have to know the answer. What is the purpose of the beam of high energy electrons? It's to ionize atoms. That's what it's there for. And another question where you simply have to know that separation of ions in a mass spectrometer depends on both the mass and the charge of the ions. So those are questions which need 10 seconds to do, no more. So to answer this, we're looking at mass and charge. Obviously, the greater the charge, the greater the deflection, the lighter the mass, the greater the deflection. So we're looking at a great charge, C and D. We're looking at a lighter mass, 35. That C is the answer. Another question that really shouldn't take more than 10 seconds or so. Take advantage of these questions where you only need 10 seconds. This is another way of doing these kind of questions where you're given a, a diagram, a graph, and this can be either relative abundance or intensity. And this element here with a mass to charge, mass to charge ratio of 24 as an intensity or relative abundance of 100. This one, mass to charge 25 has a relative intensity of 12.8. And this one has a relative intensity of 14.4 and clearly the average of these three will be much closer to 24 than to that or that. You can guess that it's probably going to be in the, around 24.1, 24.2, something like that. And that gives you this. It's clearly not going to be 25 or greater and it's not going to be 14.4. So this is another question which should take you no more than about 10 seconds just by looking at the numbers. This is another question which is more about mathematics than chemistry. However, you are expected to understand what is meant by the 63 here and the 65. And those are the atomic masses or the relative atomic masses of these isotopes, these particular isotopes, and they are mixed together in natural copper to give a relative atomic mass of 63.55. And you can guess that there's going to be a lot more of 63 copper than 65 copper. Just thinking about the average, you would reckon that that's probably going to be 25 or 30 percent of that in order to get 63.55 because in order to get say 64 you would need 50% of that 50% of that so that would give you 64 and to go from 64 to 63.55 you need to go from 50-50 to 30-70 you can do the calculation if you want to, and that's simple. It's 70 over 100 
times 63. Not necessary to do in paper one, but certainly in paper two you'd be expected to do it. And that's 30 over 100 times 65 equals. And if you did that calculation in your head or whatever, you would come to D. Another question. More mathematics than chemistry. You can see by looking at these relative atomic masses and the percent abundance that the answer is not going to be below 43.9. It's clearly going to be somewhere between 43.9 and 45.9. And therefore, there are only two possibilities, C and D. It can't be D, because that would be 100% of this isotope. So if you had 100% of this isotope, it would be 45.9. You've only got 60% of it, so it brings it down to 44.8 because it's got to be greater than 43.6. When I'm asked to give the best description of relative atomic mass, I'm going to use the number 12th of carbon-12 in it somewhere. You look through here and you find it at the bottom. The weighted mean mass of naturally occurring isotopes of an element compared to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. So it has to be that one. It's the only one that's got this number 1 12th in it. The others are irrelevant. Again, a question that takes no more than 10 seconds. Take advantage of these questions that only take. In this question, the examiner is checking that you understand that the relative atomic mass of any isotope is the sum of the atomic number, which is the number of protons, plus the number of neutrons. So that sum in that case is 28, and in this case it's 29. And it also is checking that you understand that isotopic abundance, in this case 90% there and 10% there, means that the relative atomic mass of element X will be very close to the relative atomic mass of this isotope, 28. And in fact, 28.1 seems a reasonable number for this. And certainly 28.5 is clearly not reasonable. Because to have a, a relative atomic mass of element X of 28.5, you would need 50% of that and 50% of that. So it would be halfway between 28 and 29. And so the answer is clearly... 28.1. The 14 is there obviously to confuse you, and 28.5 and 28.9 are not reasonable numbers. In this case, you're expected to know that in a mass spectrometer, organic molecules break down into parts. And if you do a quick calculation of the relative molecular mass of this molecule, there's four carbon atoms, two oxygen atoms, eight hydrogen atoms, you'll come to 88. So you can accept that there will be a peak at 88, a mass charge ratio of 88. You can also accept that this CH3, which has a mass of 12 for carbon, three for hydrogens, therefore a total of 15, that would come off as a, as a, as a single particle and will create this peak at 15. And you're also expected to know that C2H5 will come off as a single particle. Uh, two carbons are 24, that's five hydrogens, bringing it to 29. So that's a normal peak to be expected. The only peak that therefore is not going to be expected is 32. Now, just to give you the reasoning for that, if the molecule is written COO, C2H5, you can see that CH3 would come off, uh, C2H5 would come off. No way would O2 come off. That just won't come off. The two oxygens just won't come off as a pair to give 32. And that's the only way you can get 32 with this particular molecule. The peak that you don't expect is B, 32. 
If you found this YouTube video helpful, please subscribe to my channel and look at my other videos. Thank you.